Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Daisy. Today I will be reading my subscribers scary stories. So if you are interested, grab your snacks, grab your cobija, and let's get straight into it. This story is about my neighbor's house that is next door to my dad's house. Before the house was remodeled to be rented out, it used to be a large storage building belonging to the house to the left of the building. Rumor has it, the guy who owned the house and the storage building went to prison for murder. The house stayed vacant for a few years when I was a kid, until the new owners finally moved in. We befriended them and got to know a few things about the home. Apparently, the guy was into some satanic stuff. He had sacrificed dogs and put their carcasses in his swimming pool. He would also bring girls back to the storage building and attempt to do bad things to them. They had remodeled the storage building to rent out as a house, but no one ever stayed longer than a year. I always found it odd that no one would stay until I befriended a girl that lived there. There was some kind of spirit or entity that occupied the home, and my friend and her mom named it Richard. One day, while my friend and her mom were home alone, they were both in their bedrooms when they heard the hairdryer in their bathroom going on and off repeatedly. They both thought it was each other at first until they came out of their rooms annoyed from the noise just to realize neither of them were in the bathroom. Her mom went into the bathroom to find the hairdryer was not even plugged in. My friend had most of the occurrences happen to only her. One night, while her boyfriend was over, she had gotten out of the shower and heard her boyfriend in her bedroom calling her name over and over, like a yell whisper. Franny, Franny. Her bedroom door was open, but the lights were off. She started to approach the room when suddenly her boyfriend walked through the front door because he had gone out to smoke. It was only them two in the house at the time. Once she saw her boyfriend, she turned white as a ghost. She ended up putting her dirty clothes back on and left the house. My friend didn't go back to her house for a few days after that. A few things also happened to me while visiting. One night, I was over alone, pet sitting their three dogs, when I kept hearing a weird buzzing noise coming from my friend's mom's room. At first, I ignored it since I was watching TV, so I thought it was a TV. But my friend's dog was standing at her mom's bedroom door, frozen, almost like pointing with her body to the room. So I got up to go investigate. Once I got to the door, I could hear it again, but it was louder than a buzz now. I slowly opened the door to find an eight foot tall ladder with a drill sitting at the very top. As my eyes met the drill, the trigger was pulled again for a short second, but that was all I needed to see before hightailing it back home. There was another instance where I had stayed over there kinda late with my friend and her boyfriend binge watching a TV show. When my friend and her boyfriend had fallen asleep on the couch, I turned off the TV and went to lay down on the other couch since it was late, and I knew my dad had locked the front door to the house. I tossed and turned for a second because something didn't feel right in my gut, but I just summed it up to be anxiety. When I finally got comfortable and it was dead silent in the house is when I heard it. I heard a yell whisper coming from behind the couch I was laying on. The worst part is that it was my friend's voice calling my name when I was looking straight at her sleeping. I immediately jumped off that couch, realizing that the couch was inches from my friend's room where she heard her name being called too. I ran home after that and made my brother unlock his window so I could sneak in. I never went back to that house after dark again. She and I ended up having a falling out a few years later, but she still lives there. I still wonder if things still happen there or who is haunting that place? Sincerely, Kylie. Hello Daisy, 
I want to share a scary story that I heard from a coworker while living in Germany. We moved to Heidelberg, Germany in 2002 when my stepdad was in the US Army. The base where this took place closed down in 2013. In October 2005, which was my senior year of high school, a 12-year-old boy died during our homecoming parade. Apparently, he latched onto the back of a truck with one hand while riding and holding onto his scooter with his other hand. The driver was unaware that the boy was holding onto the back of his truck, so as he swerved, the boy lost balance and his head struck the spare tire holding. He then fell and hit his head on the curb. Paramedics took too long to arrive, so the young boy died on the scene. I didn't attend the parade, so I didn't witness what happened, but the event was devastating for the whole army community. Fast forward to a few months later. It was the summer of 2006, and I had just graduated from high school. My mom threw a graduation party for me, and we invited some of our Hispanic friends, coworkers, and close neighbors to come hang out with us. Everyone was having a good time, listening to music, socializing, and engaging in conversation. I kind of eased my way into a small group of people who were already having a discussion. I took a seat and began to listen to my coworker Betty speak to another person. In other words, being a chismosa. Betty was a Panamanian lady who worked in the deli department of the commissary. To those who aren't aware, the commissary is a supermarket on military installations for service members and their dependents. Well, she began talking about how she tries to avoid the area where the young boy died. At that time, there were still remnants of his blood on the sidewalk and street. My curiosity got the best of me, so I asked her why. Well, she goes on to say how one night, she was walking home from work. The commissary closed at 9 p.m., but she usually finished her shift around 10 p.m. She decided to take the route where the accident took place because that was the quickest route home. Even though she was walking through the neighborhood, she had a dreadful sense of loneliness. The eerie silence also added on the uneasiness she was already feeling. There were no cars driving on the streets and no other people around. When she got closer to the area where the accident took place, she said the street light began to flicker until the light went out. Afterwards, she felt an ominous presence and she heard footsteps following closely behind her. She didn't turn around because she got the sense that whatever was following her was otherworldly. She started to panic and hyperventilate from the fear. And in an attempt to get someone's attention, she pulled out her keys and began to shake them loud and hard, but to no avail. She didn't run due to health issues, so she just walked as fast as she could. Once she got closer to her apartment building, she turned around to look behind her and she didn't see anyone in the surrounding area. After that ordeal, she didn't take that route home again. I could tell from the sheer terror in her voice that she was telling the truth. Although this base has since closed down, I hope the spirit of the child who lost his life is resting in peace. When I was 17 years old, I lived in a pretty decent trailer park with my parents and siblings. Well, this happened during summertime. My brother and I were on summer break. At night, we would love to sit outside in our yard just to talk. Sometimes we talked about scary stories while snagging on donuts and an iced coffee from 7-Eleven. It was our routine. We had done this consecutively for about two weeks, but one night, that all changed. My brother and I were outside talking and my mom came out to say that we were crazy for coming out this late being that it was around 12 a.m. We just told her to join our conversation. Time went by pretty fast and we realized it was 2 a.m. when my brother-in-law, who at the moment was living with us, came out and said he was going to pick up my sister from work, who got off at 3 a.m. My mom, brother, and I decided to accompany him. Well, on our way back, we stopped at 7-Eleven for our snacks. When we arrived at our house, we decided to just stay in the car to continue our chat. 
He parked the car in reverse, so we had a clear image of the trailers around us, and specifically this one trailer in the corner, which was the darkest one since it didn't have lights around it. We sat inside the car for about another 30 or 40 minutes, listening to my brother-in-law's stories about how he stayed with chamanes for a few months due to witchcraft that was done to him. We talked more about scary stuff when my mom jokingly said, ¿Qué les daría más miedo si ahorita ven a la llorona volando o si la ven parada allí? As she pointed to the dark trailer. We all said we preferred seeing it stand near that trailer, of course. This dark trailer was two trailers away from our trailer. But we forgot about her comment and continued talking and snacking. I felt a sudden urge to look at the trailer that was on the corner. I was in the passenger side, so I had a good view. There in front of us looked what appeared to be a mob standing against the wall, with the stick part down and the mob side up. Since it was really dark, this mob looked black as if it was a shadow of it. I glanced at it a few more times and noticed that my brother was also glancing over to the same thing. It was pretty late already, around 4 a.m., when suddenly a small chihuahua came out of nowhere and started barking at the passenger door. Then the dog ran to the dark trailer and continued barking. The dog was going nuts for some time. I looked over at the trailer and asked my brother, do you see that too? Yes, what is that, a vacuum? He replied. At this point, we were all focused on the dog barking at the trailer. He kept barking at it and running back to us. The dog got closer to the mob and began barking uncontrollably when suddenly we all see the mob turn to the dog. That is when we all realized it was a figure of what looked like a woman wearing dark clothes and having curly, messy hair. It turned to the dog and leaned in with its hands to its mouth and went, shh, then this woman turned to look at us and mumbled very loudly a bunch of gibberish that we couldn't understand. It sounded as if it had multiple voices. Although we had our windows up, we were able to hear the gibberish very clearly. The tone sounded threatening and angry. The spot where it was standing then turned even darker, like a dark hole appeared on the floor and the woman descended down. It came back up facing the trailer's front door. The door illuminated, shining a very bright light, and the thing went right through the door. We all witnessed this in a matter of seconds. I began having a panic attack. I started crying and hyperventilating. My brother ran out of the car and went inside our trailer to wake up my dad. As I was crying, I asked if they all saw it. Did you see it? Did you see it? My mom, in shock, said yes. Meanwhile, my sister and her boyfriend still stared at that dark trailer. I slowly began to calm down, but that didn't last very long. We started to hear what sounded like weeping in the air. Then the SUV started moving side to side. I remember thinking it was my brother-in-law for some reason trying to scare us. I yelled, stop that! And the car got still again. I turned to look at my brother-in-law, but he too looked frightened. That is when I got out of the car and ran inside. My brother was telling my dad, who was half asleep, half awake, what was going on. My mom, sister, and her boyfriend came inside and validated our story to our dad who then believed us. However, my mom seemed more angry than scared. She kept telling my sister and her boyfriend to accompany her since she wanted to go back to the dark trailer. I begged them not to go out, but they didn't listen and went anyway. When they returned, my brother-in-law said that when they were walking to that trailer, they started hearing soft mumbling and weeping between two cars that were parked there. He told my mom and sister to wait a few feet away so he could go investigate a little closer. He was able to see the thing crouched down. He described it to be a very tall woman looking down while she whispered and cried but was laughing at the same time. He asked her, who are you and what do you want? 
but it just kept doing the same thing without acknowledging his presence. He returned back to my sister and mom and decided it was best to come back inside. We all ended up sleeping in one room together, and in the morning, we talked about what we witnessed. Everyone heard and witnessed the exact thing, but there was only one difference in our stories. When the thing turned to us and spoke gibberish, my brother and I were able to see the face clearly, and we both described it looking gray like a stone, resembling a gargoyle, but everyone else only saw a black circle for its face, like a shadow. We later spoke to the people who lived and still live in that trailer since we were acquainted. We told them what we witnessed that early morning, and since they happen to have cameras all over their trailer, we encouraged them to check their footage since they were very skeptical about it. They told us they would check it later that day. But after that conversation, they stopped talking to us and shortly after, they installed automatic lights outside their door. To this day, we have no idea if they were able to see anything on tape. I am 23 years old right now, and I still get scared and get goosebumps remembering this encounter. I can seriously confirm that there is good and evil out there, and that we are not alone. Sincerely, Alma. My family has a long history of strange things we've all experienced over the years. We're from Miami, Florida, and as children, we grew up pretty poor, so we usually lived in older houses and apartments. I've had multiple strange experiences in two different houses I've lived in, but I'll mention the first two for now. When I was 10 years old, we lived in an older 1950s home in Miami, so it was my parents, five brothers, and myself living there. My siblings and I all used to share rooms until I started becoming older. My mom wanted to give me space, being I was the only girl out of five boys. So my youngest brother, who was three at the time, moved into my parents' room, and I was given my own room. I had never experienced anything paranormal before, until sleeping alone and having that room. At the time, I was 10. My best friend and I were in my room playing with cards. We'd throw them up into the air and see who can pick up the most and the fastest. By the fifth time doing this, we were out of breath and needed water. We threw the cards up into the air and planned to continue the game as soon as we got back. So we left the room, headed to the kitchen, leaving the cards scattered everywhere. From the kitchen, you could see my bedroom door, which I had closed behind me to keep the boys out. We served ourselves water and headed back to the room. We were gone for 30 seconds at most. When we entered the room, all the cards were gone. We were baffled. We had thrown them everywhere. We looked all over for them and after a good 10 minutes, we finally found them. In my closet, neatly in a stack and tucked into a corner on the floor. We were shook. We thought it had to be one of my brothers, but none of them were home at the time except for my youngest brother who was only three years old. Even if they were there, there was no way anyone could or even would walk into my room, pick up all the cards, neatly place them in order into a stack, place them in the closet, then leave without being noticed or heard in 30 seconds. We picked the deck up and checked them. All the cards were neat, upright, and stacked correctly. We decided to call it quits and play outside for the rest of the day. My second experience happened in the same room. One night, I was in bed asleep. I had a habit of always sleeping with the lights off and needing the door closed. Otherwise, I couldn't sleep. Well, I woke up feeling uneasy. I looked up and my bedroom door was wide open. All the lights in the house were off, including my bedroom. But in the doorway, I could see a very faint silhouette of someone standing there. I thought it was my oldest brother. 
He's a big, husky, tall guy. So that was my first assumption. But something was off. The silhouette was not solid. It was translucent and a very dark green. I could not make out any details, just solid dark green. I could only describe the silhouette as looking like the old school Frankenstein. Large, wide, square head, square shoulders, very tall, just super bizarre. But I felt like I was just seeing things and decided to try and go back to sleep. I laid back down and just as I did, I heard as though large, heavy feet were shuffling onto the carpet. Slow, dragged out steps. I quickly got up and turned on my bedside lamp and nothing was there. I got up, closed the door and watched TV until it was morning. I was so creeped out and exhausted from the lack of sleep that I stayed home from school the next day. So that was it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you to everyone that has written in their stories. Thank you to everyone that is watching. I love you guys. Thank you so much. If you have a spooky story that you'd like to share with us, please feel free to send it in at daisyspooks at gmail.com. That is my email where you're able to send in your spooky stories. But thank you guys so much. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope to see you all in my next one. Bye.